Well, summer's coming, as you well know, ladies and gentlemen, pretty much in the middle of it already, and what happens in summer is the kids go off to camp. We send our children off to camp during the summer, and this is going to be no different. Uh, Forty of the world's most illustrious and good-looking people are going to something called Google Camp, and they will be talking about the perils of global warming. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott, and this is the kind of thing that we've talked about before, but I kind of want to take a different angle on this. Just so you have the general outline of it, Google is sponsoring a three- or four-day uh, weekend uh, where the topic will be how global warming must be prevented in order to save the planet. Now, somebody has done the math here, and I think the num uh, I'm not going to waste a lot of time trying to find the numbers because it's not really exactly relevant. I think it was 111, 113 private jets plus private yachts will be used to go to the global warming summit to talk about how bad uh, air travel is in terms of the uh, in terms of the environment. Now, look, we've talked about the hypocrisy of this before, and that's old news, and the whole global warming thing, is that, that's old news, too. Here's what I want to talk about. There, there is, by the way, there is a non-disclosure agreement uh, in this particular resort. Every single employee there has to sign a non-disclosure agreement, and, and I'm just a little curious if that turns out that they're all there to save the planet. Why would that want to be something you'd want to keep so secret? What is it they're talking about? Here's my point. Logic is our friend. Uh, it's not their friend, but it's our friend. Either they believe that this global warming threat is a is a, a foundational peril to society and must be addressed, or they don't believe it. Those are the two choices. They either believe it or they don't believe it. I cannot imagine them doing this if they if they actively thought the whole thing was a fraud. So they do believe it. And now we get to the point. Scott, let's start with you. How far away from the average human person do you have to be to not see the optics of, of, of 100 private jets flying to a private island to listen to Katy Perry's uh, deep insights on, on the environment and to be entertained by Sting and, and, and all the rest? And Prince Harry will be there too, so so the science is just going to be just almost un, uh, almost unlimited. How far out of of contact with the world do you have to be in order to do something this appalling, just in terms of the optics of it? Well, Bill, yes, they're flying there on their private jets, but I'm sure somewhere if you dig deeper into that story, you'll see that once they arrive at the airport, then all of these celebrities will pile into solar powered trams to get them to the hotel yeah, where the lights mile, will be yeah. kept on a, on a dimmer to keep mm -hmm. it down, uh, to keep their energy consumption down. Uh, this is this is kind of akin to celebrities showing up at a gun control rally with their armed bodyguards. Precisely um, correct. Yes. You know, but it, this is but this is so much more visible. And, I, and I'm not trying to interrupt you, Scott, but it's like this is my entire point. How much of a bubble do you have to be in to to not see how absurd this is? These are the people that think that they should be running the planet. And I think that, um, you know, this is a great cause for celebrities to be involved in, specifically because of the low burden that it places on them personally. If you can get away with flying into a, you know, to a global warming conference in your own private jet, I'm sorry, global climate change conference on your own private jet, well, then you can get away with anything. This is much better than being, you know, like Angelina Jolie mucking around in Africa, touching yeah, Ebola-ridden, yeah, yeah, yeah. lice-covered children, you know? No. You don't want to do that kind of thing. No, That's no, no. very inconvenient, and and your agent would uh, would not know how to get in touch with you at all times. Um, you know, I, here's here's the way you would think something like this would play out, Bill. The organizer for this conference would say, "Listen, uh, we were going to hold this conference on this uh, luxurious island, and you could all fly in and see it. But you know what? Not only does that look bad, but it is bad." Because we right. really believe in this right. idea that our jets are actually causing additional burden on the planet, that low-lying islands will be flooded and, and poor people will be drowned and things will burn up and food will be hard to get and wars will start as a result of this. So I'll tell you what, stay home. We are going to do this on Skype. We are going to do like a, just a big group meeting. We'll use Slack. We'll use Skype. We'll use FaceTime. We'll use some of the technology. Uh, technology. Uh, 
with apologies for the fact that that technology does use server farms that burn up a lot of electricity, most of which is manufactured uh, in coal plants, uh, coal fired plants. But that's the best we can do. That's the lowest impact kind of conference we can do. If they did that and then broadcast it and shared it with yes. everybody, they would have the moral authority that they purport to possess legitimately. Right. right. If we were to have this in a resort someplace that composted their own uh, waste and, and, you ha and you're going to have everybody is going to be driven there in an electric car, and, and something like that, right? Something like that. There are not going to be any vehicles there. Everybody's going to get around by bicycle and so on and so forth. Something like that, you could take these people seriously. But, but I'm not so much interested, Steve, in the, in the global warming aspects of this. What I'm interested in is these people think that they're the smartest people on the planet. They think that anybody who doesn't believe what they believe are idiots. And with, with it being Google camp, the reason that they've invited Katy Perry and Leonardo DiCaprio and Barack Obama, by the way, to something ostensibly about a scientific problem is because they know that celebrities can, quote, raise awareness and so on. Well, they've raised awareness, all right. <laughs> I just don't think they've raised awareness in the way that, that, uh, that really makes sense. Uh, I, do, you, do, you under, do you understand the point I'm trying to get at? Is, I do. If you want to run the world, if you really think that you are, are, are going to run the world, in the interest of the people, by the way, uh, needless to say, then how can you do something this unbelievably tone deaf and stupid? Uh, and and I, can't, I can't figure I, that one out. I'm going to challenge your premise here, Bill. I think they love these optics. I think they live... For these optics, uh, let me explain. You know, a, a, a king of of yesteryear, even yes, e got it. Yeah, even even 150 years ago, uh, had the same access to medicine as the lowliest serf, which is to say, none. In fact, the richer you were back then, probably the worse medical care you got. Because if you got sick, the doctors would show up and put leeches on you and try and bleed out the humors. Whereas if you were a poor person, and most people were poor, the doctors would be merciful and and leave you alone. It was like the best thing that could happen was not being seen by a doctor. Uh, Andy Warhol said uh, the genius of American capitalism is that for 25 cents or whatever the price is, everybody gets to drink the exact same Coca-Cola. Um, you, you, know, you go back even further, uh, Caligula, the most infamous Roman emperor, could dress up like a peasant and hang out in the streets and not get recognized. But with, with wealth and money, uh, these days you go everywhere to get recognized. Uh, th th this is what you do. What fun is it drinking the same Coke as everybody else? What fun, is, got it. What fun is air travel when everybody can do it? Uh, you know, th sure, there's a difference between a, uh, a Toyota Camry and a Maserati, but even today's six-cylinder Camrys can do zero to 60 in times that were supercar speeds. 25 or 30 years ago. So what fun is it being rich and powerful when when even uh, lower middle class people can enjoy pretty much all the same stuff you do, even if it isn't quite as nice? See, that's what this is about. It's about lording it over the people who aren't rich and famous. It's about using the law to take away things like air travel, like owning your own car, the, uh, about enjoying decent food that, uh, that, that, that will separate them again, that will, that will elevate them again in ways that they haven't been able to enjoy because of the wonderful benefits of capitalism that have, that have equalized, uh, uh, maybe not uh, the extremes of wealth, but have equalized the pleasures of life in ways that just don't make them feel as special as they think is their right. Steve Green is right on the money on this one. Uh, I remember when I was when I was when we heard these stories about uh, you know these apps that could tell you where the worst concentration of human feces were in the streets of San Francisco, which is certainly, if not the most beautiful city in the world, one of them. I remember I remember thinking, how can Gavin Newsom? How could they let this happen? How could they let it happen? And the only answer I could come up with was the same answer that Steve came up with, and that is, it's not a bug; it's a feature for them. 
it's the little people that have to walk among the human filth and the and the and the and and step on needles and all the other stuff. I don't have to go down into the into the streets of the city where people are are simply defecating on the streets. I don't have to deal with that. If I'm Nancy Pelosi or anybody else that talks about new, you know, just opening the borders for immigration, there's people are not going to move into my neighborhood. The worse things get outside of my compound the better I get to feel. This is really it. It's this, this is the dynamic. I've said this many times before, and this really needs to be understood. If you, if you look at this as hypocrisy, you need to understand something. We'll take Leonardo DiCaprio as an example. Leonardo DiCaprio does not have a jet so that he can go to global warming conferences. Leo DiCaprio goes to global warming conferences so he can have the jet. It gives him it gives him the fig leaf to fly around the world in comfort and luxury on his own, which he is fully entitled to do. He's worth every penny he makes. He brings money in. He's entitled to have as many private jets as he wants to. But, but by going to, to the global warming conference once or twice a year, he's basically writing himself a permission slip to use that jet 40 times a year, 50 times a year. Well, yes, I have a private jet, but I do it for the you know I, I do it for the good of the planet. And as far as the whole global warming thing is as a as a uh, as an actual thing, I'm going to go back to something I said. Uh, oh, wow, 14 years ago now is that right? Yeah, when Al Gore um, uh, came out with an inconvenient truth, and we were all three of us were blogging. Steve was at Vodka Pundit, I was at Eject Eject Eject. Scott was at Scrapple Face, and it became known shortly after. Uh, uh, an inconvenient truth came out that um, Al Gore's house used something like I want to say it was like six times the electrical use of of, this, of the average person living in in Tennessee. And and here's here's the argument I made at the time. If I were to tell you that I've done the scientific research that's proven that eating olives will destroy the planet then you will never see me eat another olive again. And if you find out that I eat six times more olives than the, than the guy next door to me, what does that tell you? What does it tell you? And, and, and this is the thing that I can't, I can't escape. Uh, our, our mutual friend uh, and, and benefactor, certainly in the early days, Glenn Reynolds, has got this, he's got it exactly right. He's got it in a sentence. I will start treating this like a, I start, I'll start considering this a crisis when the people who tell me it's a crisis start acting like it's a crisis. And, and for this to happen is not just an indication that there's nobody taking this seriously. It's an indication that the people who want to rule over you want to do so for the exact reason that Steve Green mentioned. It's got nothing to do with global warming. It's got nothing to do with anything. If you restrict commercial air travel and you eliminate it, then the only people that will be able to travel by air will be the nobility of the, and the aristocracy that has temporarily been abolished for a few hundred years here on planet Earth, but but those genes are still out there, and they're and they're determined uh, to to raise their ugly heads. I don't know what to say about these people. I can only say this: I don't want people like that uh, telling me what to do with my life because I. It's not just the hypocrisy of their own lives; they are so out of touch with everything that they can't see how appalling this is and how and how shamelessly self-promoting it is. So I say, why don't you all just stay on that little island, and you can call it Googleistan, and you can all be kings and dukes, and President Obama can can issue uh, 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 you know uh, fiefdoms and 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 awards of nobility, and they can do the whole thing where you where you uh, take a knee and and endure these blows and no other, and they can all be knighted, and they can all have their titles and their ribbons, and they can all feel great and not bother the rest of us who have lives to live and work to do and families to raise and 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 fun to have. So anyway, so much for these miserable low life uh, swine who are who are trying to tell the rest of us honest, hardworking people how to live and take our money to do it as well. Uh, I, I suggest please keep doing it. Please, please, more, 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 more. I hope you hold the next one in the stratosphere, in some giant 747 that orbits the Earth 15 times. Anyway, that'll do it for this edition of Right Angle, made possible by the paying members at BillWhittle.com. Small group of people getting this message out for large groups of people. And if you want to be one of them, we'd love to have you. Just head over to BillWhittle.com, become a member. 
Uh, for Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle, and we'll see you next week right here on Right Angle.